Let me know in the chat if everything works. Hello YouTube, hello Twitch. As always recently, I will only read Twitch chat. If you're watching on YouTube, switch to Twitch for the live chat. We're doing problems from this website, if you don't know it, Code Jeff. Recently it is, it is changing a lot because there are new owners. And one more thing, if you are a beginner watching me right now live, then most likely it's better for you to go watch uh, P. Marv P. Mavrin, Pashka from Code Forces, because that will be an easier lecture. If you are a beginner, go watch that channel. My stream will be at the same time, but it will be more advanced. I will not explain any easy problems. Where there you get introduction to algorithms, time complexity, stuff like that. I will paste a link for beginners. Here you go. Now that being said, I will move to code shift problems. One moment, I'm doing stuff. Like pinging on code forces. How are you? How are you, chat? And I think done. Uh, New Year chaos problem, please. Is it from what what contest? What's up with I'm thirteen? How can I start competitive programming? I understand spam, but if it's at least a little, a little bit funny. Not if it's just the same sentence repeated. I don't know. Uh, bun. What is CodeChef? What is love? What is love? A CodeChef is a programming website, competitive programming website. Will I consider CodeChef problems from the chat? Yes, I can. I will start. Mm, I will start from solving two last code chef contests, cook-off and lunch time. And by solve, I mean, I will read all the problems. I will think about them out loud. Uh, and if something is interesting, I will also code it. I'm not right now on Linux, so I can code stuff. Why is this not centered? Okay, now it's good. Mm, but I'm, it's not that I'm doing an honest virtual participation where I will try every uh, problem. Consider this, please. I commented this yesterday, but you are doing code forces. Does anybody confirm that it's an interesting problem? Long change speedrun? Not today. Not today. Uh, I I will do code chef today, not hacker rank. Only code chef today. Close. Move this to the side. This thing as well. See the description for link to my new Discord server. It's growing now, I think, 200 people or so. 75 online. Oh, 400. Cool. It's from two days ago. Compete. Okay, one thing about CodeChef is it's hard to know recent contests, I would say, because in upcoming contests, there, there's this one thing. Th this banner is too big, in my opinion. Hmm. Recent questions, submissions. I, I think this is very bad UI. September cook-off, August, August lunchtime. I want this. 
and I want past Kukov. And for that I need to go to all past contests. And I will need to do this. So that's, let's say, second. First, let's try August lunchtime. No, oh, I didn't know they have divisions for that. No, no, I didn't want to click. No, that's also worth checking out. The reason why I'm doing this today, because recently Coachev got new owners. A lot of things are changing. Now, 300 IQ is... Uh, will be a coordinator, I think the main coordinator. And I heard a lot of times that now the quality, recently quality of coach of problems is quite high and I want to check that. Okay, in division two, in August lunchtime, there will be, I, I'm seeing what's the intersection. Mode of frequencies is only in division two and the last one is elevator. Something is wrong, maybe the order is bad. Game on strip, alien invasion. Oh, ratings, ratings and rankings are only in division two. And then counting graphs and elevator, and there are two problems only for division one. Accurate accuracy is zero point nine percent. Nice. Any plan for lead code? Yes, but not today. I cannot find the Pashka stream. Yeah, if if I mentioned something, you don't see it in the chat, then please somebody else sh paste the link again. Uh, no, 300 IQ is guy from Russia. It, it isn't not, it isn't BenQ. Uh, okay, so let's start from division two. Here I will not code it, I will just take a look at problems. Then we move to division one. For division one, I will give you a link. Uh, so that's August lunchtime division one. You can open it, but let's quickly first go through division two. Blah, blah. So, uh, okay, I will not skip the first paragraph because that's also what I'm judging here. How stupid the story is. Yeah. So this is one of those paragraphs where it's not at all related to the rest of the problem. And I I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, where sometimes the story is related to the problem, but here we have a list of problems, something, something, and here unrelated paragraph. This already decreases quality of a problem, in my opinion, because the statement is stupid. Numbers. Uh, you need to find the mode of the frequencies of numbers. Mode is the most common thing. And the value that appears most often in a set of data values. I think it's fine to give a link to Wikipedia so that you don't need to provide the uh, definition, but if somebody needs it, they just click a word. If there are multiple model values, report the smallest one. In other words, find the frequency of all the numbers and then find the frequency which has the highest frequency. If multiple such frequencies exist, report the smallest non-zero one. I think I would remove the more formally part if we here explain in other words, because that's already the same statement repeated. Like it's said first time, then second and third time. The same thing. Uh, shortest cases as always. At least in the past, Kouchev couldn't handle hundreds of tests. And this, this is why always they have test cases. I don't know, boring problem. I can come up with something more interesting for an easy problem. Oh, uh, I'm not even going to implement it because it's just implementation. I will take a look at the editorial. The chat is thinking who will win IOI 2020. That is, you know, it will be one of the highest rated people for sure. William is very good, but he he isn't the best. I would say that William is around third, fifth best person in this IOI. IOI is not a team competition, no. The numbers are only from 1 to 10? Really? Yes, they are. Huh. Did 
tester solution. Uh, <laughs> I think in the in the editorial you should remove the long part with all the templates. Read string in some fast way. Oh, because that's validator. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. Sure. Nothing interesting. Let's move on. Uh, the second easiest problem is this, and then we move to division one. The statement is longer, I think. Because from the very start this time we have the real statement, not the story. When is my next lockout match? In around three days. The current round is ending on Sunday and then I will face game game. But there are only two rounds left before live finals. Live finals means uh, streamed finals of some different format. And players a month. Uh, this is rating of I've player. peak rating and peak ranking did not occur in the same month. To first to find the ratings and ranking. The ranking means place. The month in which they achieved their highest rating over all months was different from the month in which they achieved their best rank. If there are ties, consider the earliest of them. Yeah, it's some, um, again, a boring implementation problem. Code Forces has a very different style. Wait a second, it's a lunchtime. If it's lunchtime, those problems should be more IOI style. What was, what was that in the first problem, mode of frequencies? Was there a subtask? And up to 100? Is there a... Is there anybody who didn't get the full score in those two problems? I'm in division two, yes. How to scroll to big page? I can modify the link. In IOI style problem, if only people get hundreds, in this problem, then it's a bad problem. And I don't think you need, if there are subtasks, you don't need five problems. Well, some people got five here. Oh, but that's in arrangement game. That's in a different one. I know what I need to check. Ratings, this is called ELO max. I can sort by ELO max. Did I do it? decreasing and now binary search this is how in one minute I can find out Elon max okay people got 30 points well, whatever okay move on division one coach of August lunchtime division one let's see how good the problems were you can hover to see, hover over problem on dash. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, this is what I was looking for. Mode of frequencies. Uh, 6,000 people got 100, 100 people got 70. So just everybody got the max score. Here, mm, one fifth of problem, well, one fifth of people got 200 so I got 30 points so that's a bit better but still bad than this this is good here it's good that half of people got half the score here max score mainly a lot of people got 50 and we'll, we'll see the division one problems but I'm guessing that contest was mainly binary 
and <laughs> let's see I'm guessing that the subtasks are just smaller n smaller n oh th that's a good subtask are either all odd or all even that's good they should make more subtasks and they shouldn't just put 50 everywhere but it's better yeah, some of them very boring subtasks this is a bad contest to practice for IOI really bad contest practicing for IOI is mainly about you know, doing problems where you you have subtasks uh, I after checking out lunchtime and cook off I will then get some suggestions from the comment section from the chat about other coach of problems Please, YouTube, be aware that I only read Twitch chat. There is a sequence. Some cells are available, some are forbidden. And there is a game. If it is the current player's first turn, she may move to any free cell. Otherwise, she may only move to one of the left and right adjacent cells. Can they revisit the same cell? cannot move again so and from now on I will make drawings on the gray Nothing interesting is happening here, so we will quickly move on. Uh, but yeah, we have a sequence of positions. Some of them are forbidden. So my drawing tablet is messed up for a moment, so I will draw very ugly. Okay, let's say those are forbidden. If you are somewhere, then you can move to adjacent cells, but you cannot move to the same cell. So for starting from this rightmost cell, you will move here, here, then there you survive for three turns basically you can choose some long segment of available cells and that's it but after the first player does that the second player will i think is able to choose a cell next to the first one and if everything is available and player a starts here then player b will start next to him to block him and move to the right if everything is available then most likely the first player will start somewhere in the middle the second player will then choose this next cell uh, yeah, and we just compare lengths i need to fix my drawing tablet Yeah, good problem. I mean, th this is at least more natural than previous problems. Uh, this. Map to output head one Done. and it should work now. A B C good. I'm getting fast at this. 
but again it's not deterministic so i cannot do a script for it because some sometimes the response i'm getting from the first command is different i don't know why is that mm. so check in, okay we check intervals of available cells the first player will take the middle of some sequence we can consider every cell every available cell for the first player to start and then the second player can either choose the best other segment or to be next to the first player so in constant time or logarithm if we have a set we can comp we can check what the second will do not only i can say yes or no i can even for every starting position of the first player i can say where the second player will be there is a subtask a nice subtask with all cells being available that's cool I don't know if it should be worth 50 points and it's bad that they don't even think about points apparently but also there should be subtask with small n for some brute force like to iterate over position of first player and second player maybe no, they are lazy with subtask problem is fine Just a quick look if a tutorial says something interesting Quick explanation. All the length of a segment, because we start in the middle. Yeah, sure. Second largest segment. Okay, so only two largest segments matter. That's a bit lengthy explanation for sure. video editorial that's a long video editorial I'm running this because I also want to see what's the quality of this do you don't hear it I will turn it on just it's a bit too loud at least for me technology the problem statement then we will try to one minute of introduction of now that there is no and a statement sure so since Zuyu, these are the, the underscoring in red of any word is bad if you are preparing slides for any presentation better resolve this before recording so neon will move to her own leaf used to better than Zuyu's in this case as the three and four now what about Zuyu? Zuyu has a segment of S max that is why new that okay. second largest zero. There are different types of what you can do in such an editorial. And one possibility is where you make a five minute description of a solution. The other is if you go for longer, like here twenty something minutes, and then you explain a lot of examples. And both versions are available, and here we have the the longer one. I think I would prefer if if there is if there are both written tutorials and video one, then one of them should be short and the other one detailed, mm. just so people can choose. Because sometimes there is a beginner for for whom this problem is too hard. And they want to really listen to a lot of things about this problem, understand the proof. You need to walk them through some example. Or there is somebody better who just wants to quickly see the solution, whether the solution is the same with their solution or just they want to see how to do it. They will understand it after one minute. I think a tutorial should be short and then video can be long or the other way around. That's my opinion. Their quick explanation section is OK. Mm, you mean this? Th this doesn't explain a lot, I mean, at all. Uh, hmm. Okay, but this resolves my issue. I think with this it's fine and then anything other is an extra. So the written editorial here, it serves the, all the purposes. Yeah, that, that, fine. I mm, forget about what I said. 
not forget, still this is my opinion that this should be like that, but it's fine if this is quick. Uh, what? Tourist is my father? I, I don't know about that. We are the same age, plus minus one year. Second problem, alien invasion. We are here, August lunchtime 2020, Division 1. So loud? Was it really too loud? Because I already make it more quiet. I see that we have some advertisement, advertisement in the chat. Uh, can you not do it without asking for permission? Mm. Just ask for permission first. It's, you know, ev everybody can paste some random links. If you are a random person in the internet, then I don't believe that links from you are like they have any worth. That they, they will be better than a random website. And spaceships. Time CI. The time to reach Earth. Okay, starting from this, we have ta that much time, and this constant. We have intervals of constant length and now we need to choose, we, we can binary search for example because we maximize something. Uh, we can shoot and kill an interval and then after some cooldown we can kill the next interval. We need to binary search, or maybe something else, the, the cooldown, the interval. What's the solution? Mm. Yeah, do greedily, right? Just store information, store all CI, some vector, binary search the answer. And then when I say that, let's say that right now I'm checking the answer, the cooldown with bigger font, cooldown equal to five, let's say. If this moment is, the first moment ever is 10, then I can shoot again at moment 15. So the next, sh the next shot will be at moment max of 15, 10 plus five, comma, whenever the second interval starts. So just C2, assuming that C1 was 10. And we need to check if maybe this moment, this new moment, if it exceeds C2 plus D. If this is a well-known problem if D is not constant, if there are multiple intervals and you need to shoot them, then you do it greedy. Oh, no, 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 I'm not right. I wanted to say that we do it greedily, but we always shoot interval that ends earliest. It is correct. Just. If this is not constant, is this problem solvable or not? If we have this situation, either I will shoot here or maybe I need to wait and shoot there. Can I decide about it? Oh, well, uh, no, no, I mean this. 
if this is the input and maybe there is something more, if D is not constant, then do I know if I should here or here first? If this is too much to the right, then it doesn't make sense. Can we know that? Polynomial solution will exist because we will shoot once in some start of interval and then keep shooting with after time d. I think there was similar problem in a Polish Olympiad. It was called Panini. But it was more complicated. Okay, so I'm guessing that polynomial time is possible but not analog n. We need some more complicated dp. Uh, I added delay for the stream, that's not true. Wait, 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 what, what, is, what is going on in the chat? And why are you saying that I introduced any delay? If you have any suggestions for videos, then don't put them now in the chat because I will not remember. Discord server or put them in comments below my YouTube videos. Okay. Quick look at the tutorial. Oh, it's by King of Numbers. I know that guy. Doing hundred iterations. Oh, the, the the answer is real value. I thought that it's integer. Okay. And this relative error. Then sure, sure, sure. It's again a very long editorial. Do people watch it? We can do. I wonder what's the correlation what's the correlation between length of a video on Couchev and the number of views. That might be some good thing for me to know. Those two have big more views, but it might be just different style because those those are new ones from lunchtime. Yeah, August lunchtime. Something completely else. This one is very long, 45 minutes, and it has more views than other videos. I think the length isn't a bad thing, big length. No, th this is 8,000 views. Maybe just about um, in long challenge, a lot of people will struggle with the same quite difficult problem, but one that they can understand. So maybe it's about that. Find some kind of arrangement such that the number of tables that we are going to divide are directly as it will be. Well, I don't have time to watch all the videos. Um, yeah. So far, no interesting subtasks, to be honest. Counting graphs. The last non, not hard problem, and then we have a big jump of difficulty. Streams have delay? Yeah, but my Twitch stream has a delay of five seconds. When I look at the chat, that might have a big delay, because I need to look there. Like that, if I go like that, you then you can know that I'm reading the chat. I think Coachev will have higher quality editorials soon. Here's an example. 
Yeah, so you're giving me something not from Couchchef or what? This is, we can equal to ten. We can. I, I don't know. It's someone Couchchef is working with to make editorials. That's what I've heard. Then say that in the first comment. No coding today. I will do some coding when I see an interesting problem. Just so far, they were too easy. I have three hard problems here. I will do at least one of them, unless they are very, very bad. Counting graphs. Shortest path from vertex one to i is unique. And this is its length. Hmm. That's a good subtask. Just why do they always give just one subtask? Is it some system limitation? Here, you can give n up to five or n up to seven and make them iterate over all possible graphs. I won't be surprised as well if there are some solutions for n up to 1000, like n square solution. Why only one subtask? Always. m is given or not? Mm, this might make things harder. And then m. See, from vertex one, something is, I know edges from one because those are thing, things at distance one. So let's say that two, three and seven are at distance one. Then there, there is some stuff at distance two. I can just choose something, 8, 9, 10, 4. And each of them needs at least one edge. Doesn't matter from what vertex. And additionally, there are some optional edges like that. 2, 3, 7 can be connected with each other. It doesn't hurt. And then this doesn't hurt to connect in all pos like the two consecutive layers. So everything in the same layer can be this is one group of vertices that can be connected. Or basically, for every two consecutive layers, I can, I can connect everything. This will give me upper limit for the number of edges. Cool problem. I like it. It's just, again, a bit binary. The fact that this is a tree, yeah, sure, then it's easier. Can I, do I see how to count this? I can say yes or no. There should be points, if possible, for correctly saying yes or no. But can I count? Oh, that's harder, isn't it? Can it decrease the video quality, it's buffering? Do a lot of people have issue with quality of the stream? You can switch to YouTube. In the description, you will find a link to YouTube. You can watch there. I remember Gupta says, I remember seeing video of camp organized by Kouchev where you and a lot of top competitive programmers also taught something. Do you know if something like that will happen again? I don't know if it will happen. And yes, I taught some geometry there, for example. Uh, Kevin was also there. Like Kevin from Philippines? Kevin Sogo is his nickname. And But I don't know if they are organizing that again. Oh, says Unique. Thank you, Everrule Storm. Unique. Okay, okay, okay. 
this problem makes sense with non-unique paths. If it's not... Okay, then forget about those paths. This is bad. I cannot have this because then there are two paths to vertex 8. So just I can put some edges here. I can put some edges here. And this just means that for each of those, what is the number of ways I can I can connect eight to one of those parts? It's free, so it's three to fourth power, because for each of those four vertices there are three possibilities, and in general, it will be um, it will be a to b times b to c times c to d and so on where a, b, c, d are the number of vertices in first, second, third layer, and so on. Then, uh, that, that's the number of ways to choose the tree. And then additionally, there is some number of edges. I can easily compute what's the number of those possible edges. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It can be big. It can exit, it can exit int. And among all those possible red edges, I will need to choose some x. x is how many I'm missing still. So x is actually m minus n minus 1. m is how many I need, n minus 1 is how many I have in the tree, and I need to co compute this binomial coefficient. This can be done because number here is small. So I can do it in linear times, uh, linear times logarithm for the inverse. Actually can be even done in linear plus logarithm. <laughs> can we bully IGMs into using ALS for commenting? Uh, no, don't bully anybody. No option to reduce quality. Yeah, sorry about that. Switch to YouTube in that case. Uh, there is no other thing I can do, to be honest. Like the next time I can lower bitrate, I think, I will see what it is now, but I cannot change during the stream. Maybe I can. Video bitrate is 4000. Can I modify it? I will modify it to 2500 or just to 2000, then it will be a big difference. And I can also choose between encoder software and how do hardware, but I'm guessing that this will be just on my side. Apply, okay. And you tell me if anything changes about the quality of the stream from now from now on. Probably change FPS to 30. Isn't it 30? It's 30. And FPS is something I cannot change. 4K. <laughs> okay. Counting graphs done. Quick look at the editorial. I'm not coding this because it's too easy. Maybe the next problem. They count those optional red edges. Time complexity per test case. I guess this plus modulo, plus log of mod. Same solution, 45 minutes, that's a lot. I don't know if it should, it should be that long. <coughs> <coughs> mm, 
but the problem is fine and do you do we want to s okay you tell me chat should i now think if can be it, if i can solve it for non unique paths or do we move on move on or harder version of this problem i'm only reading twitch chat sorry youtube youtube is there just if you want to watch on youtube instead and downgrade the quality then you can do that and also the buffering is better than okay everybody is move on so let's move on it makes sense to ask the chat i didn't expect that it will be like everybody move on that being said csk you get a warning please don't spam in votings you said the same thing three times and no i will not move to spoy uh, today i wanted to check out coach of problems actually spoy is more chaotic i prefer coach of over spoy and i would recommend coach of over spoy for practicing for example there are editorials and you can expect something in terms of difficulty you can check the difficulty in polish it's pronounced spoy it's you know, it's a Polish website, so I say spoy with Y at the end, but it's Sfer Online Judge, so I guess it should be Sfodge. Maybe Sfodge is the correct English pronunciation. Okay, first hard problem, elevator. M floors, there is sequence B of movement. Minimize the number of changes. This is fine statement and fine problem setting. By setting, I mean what they basically ask. We'll see if this subtask makes sense. Okay, first cool problem. I'm guessing that it's a first cool problem. Can two consecutive elements be the same? Oh, I know what I don't like. There is no sample explanation. Why does the author want to get so many questions, like here in the comment section, and here we only see public ones. In Kovchev, by default, if you post a comment, nobody else sees it other than authors, like organizers. Uh, oh, and this is, I guess, uh, this is announcement. In a valid sequence, the absolute difference between two adjacent elements is exactly one. It's not even a question, it's an announcement hidden in comments like that. I, I don't know how you can make a website where very important information about the problem can be hidden like this. It's very rare that happens. You, you mean announcement or the lack of sample explanation is rare? It would be great to see you in Edu section in Code Forces. I talked with Mike Mirzayanov already about it. I will likely be in Edu section in Code Forces. It's just about choosing some topic and finding time to do it. I will be in Edu. Okay, uh, work with, let's work with sample. Two minus one for three. And I want to increase it. Here it's obvious this is modified to three. What if I have a long sequence of minus ones? Or just Let's say that those are blanks. Uh, 
Uh, is it true to say that this will be one or three? Seems seems fine. The, the upper limit is, let's say, m is equal to 5. Uh, then it will be 5, 4, 3, 2. Is it correct to say that if I draw this drawing, draw a drawing, I'm so smart, there are some points already marked, then the missing part will always be just plus 1, get to the top, then start going with minus 1, get to the bottom, and do that. Either this or the other way around, down, then up. And I say counterexample. And then I will, if that's true, then I will do from this guy to this one in just two ways. And I will have for this guy just dp of 0 or 1. 0 or 1. 0 means it's increasing and 1 means it's decreasing. What will be counterexample to that? The most naive brute force is dp of position i and the current floor f and 0 or 1, whether we are increasing or decreasing. But that's n times m, at least. If I need to iterate over the next thing without any data structure, then it will be times something else. But this brute force is O of n times m. And this wouldn't get any points, because they don't have a subtask for that. I will complain to them about it, for sure, because they even ask me about any feedback. That works, easy proof, by replacing any solution we know with one of these two. Network error. That, that was on my side. Still, my internet DNS settings suck. Sorry about that. We're back. Cool. Uh, yeah. I was just thinking out loud about this proof, why this is optimal. I already, I already believe Mangalasi about it, but I want to understand myself. And it seems obvious, kind of obvious, but I'm not 100% sure. Green path isn't optimal. If here I want to enter white guy from above, but for that, maybe I can start instead of reflect only there, from this keep going up, but then anyway, I need to go down. If here I'm going down and here I want to go down and I'm here below white already, then there is nothing I can do. There is something I can do only if this green guy is above this line. If I'm above this, then I can finish without any more reflections. Otherwise I cannot. So the fact that I'm doing, but do I need two reflections? Yes, because if I'm going down and I need to finish going down, then I need two reflections up and down. I'm convinced enough, but this wouldn't be enough. Uh, this wouldn't be enough for editorial. Network error 2000 and now chat is lagging. I cannot fix that. Easiest proof is probably by delaying change of direction as long as possible. Assume you turn somewhere other than 0 or m-1, then you can just keep going for one more step. Okay. Uh, 
if I go like this and turn here, then we are saying that it's better to keep going like that and turn there. Because when I'm assuming that here I didn't do anything more, this situation versus this one, this one is only better. Because I have more possibilities of what will be the next step. In both cases, I can here have a next step. But in the above case, I can also go here without getting plus one to the answer. Yeah. Uh, fine. Did, did, did I solve problem? Did I solve the problem then? Yeah, in constant time, go from one to the next one. Somebody said that my solution n times m passes for the subtask. No, it doesn't. M is big. There are some tricks I can use here uh, to only have small number of floors, but M is 100,000, N is 1,000, then this doesn't work. This is 10,000, the sum of N times 100,000. This will get zero points. Don't like the subtask? Problem is fine. Uh, a, a bit boring, you know, the... It was mainly about understanding the proof. Hmm. Instead of instead of coming up with some formula to move from one white so one known value to the next one, I can move position by position and just do it greedily. Oh yeah, I can do this transition in linear time, it's fine. I don't... Jumping from this to this, I don't need to do it in O of 1, it's fine to do it in O of length of the interval. Then I don't care about that. 10 to 8 could very well pass, you only need O of n memory. It's not 10 to 8, it's 10 to 9. Look. Sum of n is 10,000. So it's sum of n times m. That's 1 billion. A billion by default shouldn't pass in one second. Mm. Even if it's 10 to 8, I already would say it's bad that they are setting such limits where it's a lot of people, even very strong people, will think that it's bad, that it's too slow. Is 300 IQ 300 in the chat real 300 IQ? There are no constraints on some of them. But you know, I don't need that to... They didn't put constraints for some of M because they don't care about it much in complexity, apparently. If your complexity per test case is N times M, so you need the sum over N times M, and m is constant, it can be always 100,000, then you can put it before the sum, and it will be 100,000 times the sum of n, and they say this is 10,000, this is 100,000. Okay, back to the explanation. I will just maybe look at the code. When I worked for Kochev, I already didn't like the fact that validators are within solutions instead of being a separate program. In code versus validator is something separate and very... Everybody is careful about that, everybody is checking that, there are tests for validators. Here, if you mess up something in a solution and you have undefined behavior, then validator can be messed up as well. That's the definition of undefined behavior. Oh, is this the solution? It's quite long. Hmm. 
maybe they don't use some function here. I will copy paste it and uh, because it's hard to read their name. Mm. Code chef button for copying the code, please. This is elevator. Get ans calculate. Do they use both functions in the full solution? They have calculate within get ans. And do they run get ans? Yes, they do. I think I can code it in around 15 lines. What is a validator? Uh, don't worry about that if if you are a beginner. Mm, but yeah, it's to check if input is correct. A checker for tests. It checks tests. You you don't worry about it. It's only for organizers. Uh, okay, I will implement this this one because I'm just surprised by how long this is reply and then I can as well put my solution in comments. I wonder why there is no tester solution. Okay, if there are only minus ones then I can start from one. If if there is the first value is minus one I will need to find the next not minus one and go to the left. That can be done with formal, it can be done linearly. What else can I do? Uh, I can I can have DP of position and value, but only some of those will be visited. Actually, if the first value is not minus one, I think it's okay to say it's one or the max. If there is some optimal solution going from the right and not being extreme, anyway, the last point can be extreme. It doesn't hurt. Okay, so that's easier. So from DP post floor, I will move to DP of post plus one, floor plus one, and DP of post plus one, floor minus one. But if position and previous position are oh, and increasing decreasing if position is minus one then i will make only one of those steps if i'm at dp of let's say five the current so position is five floor is 20 and i'm increasing and if i see that in the input input of position is minus one, then I will only get to floor 21. Uh, I think I need to do this DP either row by row or recursively to make it fast. So either this or jumping from one non minus one to the next non minus one. Which version do I prefer? I think jumping between non minus ones. You can just try starting at both one and n. Uh, yes, Mango, you're right. I need. I don't try to all the time look at the chat. If I'm in the middle of thinking, then I'm continuing thinking, and we thought the same thing independently. Which problem I'm, I'm doing? This one. You can Google Code Chef Elevator, you will get the link. And 
happened to you? Today I'm doing only culture of problems, sorry. Uh, let's say that I have pro.cpp. When I was a kid, I always had pro.cpp. Like, always. Just like some people will just have a.cpp. For me, it's pro.cpp because it's program. In Polish, also, program is program. Additionally, a pro means you know, a professional, somebody good at something. Pro.cpp meant had a lot of sense for me. I'm going with version where I jump from minus one to next minus one. Uh, instead of the second one. This is also fine, but I cannot have such an array. Uh, I need to go row by row or recursively. I don't re like recursive DP. I can do it with dp plus hashing. I don't see how to use hashing here. If you mean that a hash map to only have some states, then yes, generally just any map. Uh, but I don't like that idea. If you're not minus one, find the next one. Not zero, this is minus one. If next is minus one, x plus plus. I'm minus one and he's I we are both not minus ones. Now I consider want to consider two cases of going from me up and from going from me down. Actually, is this true? If I'm not the very first element, if I'm value 17, before me there was value 10, so I can for free keep increasing, then should I consider going down here? No, I think it's better to keep going up, 18, 19, and so on, right? And for the same reasons as the whole solution. And if that's the case, then maybe I don't need any dp, and I just iterate over whether the very first number is 1 or n. Or just whether we go down or up from the very beginning. Hmm, suspicious. I'm suspicious. Repeat twice. For every number in A, if you're between 1 and M, then flip it. This will kind of mirror everything. Let's say before that. Turns is zero, answer minimize with turns. And here I assume that the first guy, f 
from, from the start I will keep increasing. And if the first one is minus one, then I treat that as zero, as uh, one. Previous is increasing is true. Previous is a of four, zero. Uh, there might be some issue about two consecutive equal elements. I didn't think about it. And this means that maybe DP is much better. If you're going to post this in comments, choose better variable names. Good, good suggestion. There are no consecutive equal elements. They didn't say it about the input. They say in a valid sequence B before a Yeah, in a valid sequence B. So let's say for me it is after I replace with minus ones, there cannot be two adjacent equal elements. Oh, it's the absolute difference is exactly one. Wait, am I solving a wrong problem? I, I didn't know that. The statement didn't say that it changes only by one. When somebody enters and floor two and goes up, I thought that they can go to floor five. It's just that two consecutive elements cannot be equal. So yes, on, one thing is if I see that two consecutive given elements are not differ, do not differ exactly by one, I can say impossible. That's easy. But I need to replace with minus ones and then I need to be much more careful about what I'm doing. In particular, I cannot just go from left to right and do things greedily. If you check parity and possibility, your solution is equivalent. Mm, yes, parity is one thing. I know what you're saying. Uh, parity will make sure that no two consecutive equal elements are equal. Because if it's even odd, even odd, everything is fine. The second one is that if I'm going like this, but now the next one is there, this should be equivalent to just turning earlier. And yes, I don't really want to prove that now very formally, but I see that it's true. Good point. Good point. And then my solution is still correct after I check parity and possibility. Parity appears. Uh, 
and if both parity appear, what do I print? Minus one, I guess. Yes. That's one, and the other one is for two consecutive non minus ones, the distance between them cannot be smaller than the difference between values. I will check that later. Hmm, but <laughs> checking that later requires this code. Anyway, my greedy should work with that extra check of two consecutive non minus ones. We start with one, not necessarily with one. We start with whatever has good parity. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, I sw doing this might flip the parity. A of zero equal one means parity of one is true. So if parity of one, then I want this, right? Yes. If parity of zero, then I will start from value two. It's very possible that I don't need to care about it. I need to treat it as worse by one, so it's just okay if I finish and be equal to the next element. But that's very tricky thing to use. I think it's correct. Yes, I will think that I always start from one. Maybe I really need to start from two, so every next value will be shifted by one. And the only thing I need to do I need to check that being equal at the end is bad. Consider this, 1, 2, 3, and now 3. This is a real value, real value 3. Then this is bad. But if this is real value, then this is good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I cannot be equal, and that should be enough. I always start from one. Turns, count turns, answer. How many floors are there? M. That's the statement. If increasing this. If I'm on the first floor and I'm decreasing, also can M be 1? No, 
impossible. I can type else as well. Maybe it will be a bit more meaningful. This is when I need to turn. Then I make a step. If AI is minus one, I do nothing. If this is not minus one, then something happens. What does happen? If this... Mm, that's why I compute element that should be here, then this is fine. This is fine. Not increasing and this is also fine and else something is not fine. This would mean I need to turn earlier. No, this means I turn earlier. Or just start higher, something like that. Else, else, else. I'm guessing that it's that plus checking if two consecutive minus ones if the distance between them is good. One one minus one. Uh, there are too many things in the output. This output is correct, but I bet that I can create output where it's bad. Uh, example will be. Hmm. 2, 10, 6, 6, 8, here correctly it will say no, because the parity is bad, but 6, 9, now they 0, actually this should be impossible, because I cannot jump from this one to this one, similar thing if I put minus 1, minus 1, 11, this should be minus 1, let's try to fix it, I'm in, oh, I'm pro. This else last non zero is zero comma a of zero. Index is enough. Last non zero minus one. Last non zero is zero. If if the difference between values let's think if they it is too big. And 
this is no matter it doesn't matter that I repeat this twice the other time I also will get well I will detect the same thing no zero is one and now can I remove the parity completely because I will check it here If I minus last non zero, this is more convenient. Let's get accepted in one minute from now. If this or Seems fine. If the parity is bad or the distance is too big. Maybe I shouldn't copy it because in the moment I will realize that I need that. Will I accept chat suggestions after I'm done with cha with lunchtime and cook off? And now I'm only in the middle of lunchtime. And it's oh, I already did hour and a half? What took me so long? Yeah, let's uh, submit this. Need to log in. I didn't log in to Couchref in a long time. Yes, it works. I have five stars because the last rated round for me was a long, long time ago. The only thing I did since then is sometimes in a long contest there is something interesting maybe an optimization problem and i would only submit something for that single problem but then i will get very bad rank because i'm not trying to get a lot of hmm. i'm not trying to get a lot of points i'm not solving other problems wrong answer will you take care of your code chef rating soon if they have quality problems, then yes. Mm, okay, well, I, it's okay for sample test. During a contest, I would implement a brute force because it's easy, but I can do something, some cheating. I have setter solution. So let's make in one minute a generator. What about I need to hide this for a moment? I don't want to show you problems that are not yet used. go I just copied some generator from one of my problems from for a coder and because test leap mm. test creation library is better than just using rand limits from one to five this should work Seems fine. Pr 
pro their program oh because they care about the spaces that's annoying for you know self testing I'm not satisfying something from 1 to M you can try brute force against setters to check quickly ah, I believe that setters have a correct solution I think that I have an incorrect one this is why I'm checking mine against setter he says one turn and I'm saying something stupid. Zero. Yeah, obviously, if this is maximum, then we cannot go above. What I will do? I will say one, two, four. And previous is equal A of I. I need to do something like that. I, m I missed this line. Yeah, that's, that's an obvious line. Like if I go 1, 2, 3 and then I see number 10, I need to assign the, assign the last number is 10. If I read the code instead of going with generator, I would find this bug quickly. It's quite obvious one. How you create generator? Well, you, you can read this. Every next parameter I choose from some small range. Here it's like m is chosen from 2 to 5. I as, I included testlib.h. It's code forces library for test generation. Mm, so it has functions like give me a random number from a to b. There's also print n space m. Print for single variable. Same can be done with a vector. You can Google code versus test lib and read about it. I'm not going to do CSES. Some people already did it. Mm. William Lin did some speed run. Uh, Ice Cuber, I think, or somebody else on code versus covered the DP section of CSES. Okay, I have much shorter code than uh, than setters so i will paste i will paste it in the forum is it that much shorter well yeah, yes it is this is 150 lines of real code. And they, their lines are long, I would say. Okay. How to do it? Elevator. Editorial. I wonder if this should preformatted text is for codes. I'm not really sure. Spoiler. Spoiler doesn't seem to work, or maybe it will work after posting. I'm not sure. Spoiler should hide. I want this and spoiler. I don't know, so I will just do this. Uh, is this public? My link to my submission? Can I link my submission? Mm, it's complicated. Elevator, my submissions. 
No recent activity. Hmm. Okay, found it. And it's public. Then in a comment I can just link the code. I start with one and greedily go up. Keep going up by one. Keep going down by one after hitting the limit M. Mm. I care about new values. I, I different. I difference than minus one. No, the point of what I'm doing now is that it's obviously it obviously can help somebody. So that's a significantly different solution. Resubmit without debug template? Uh, too late. Okay, maybe not too late. This this submit yes edit. You solved this practice problem? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, oh, but that that's from a few minutes ago. Details, spoiler details. Uh, no, no, it's too late. Done. Give me all the likes. The hearts. It's simple, he runs the generator. I'm sure that I have a video for that. YouTube, Erichto, testing your solutions. How to test your solution in competitive programming. Go watch that. Link stream for free views? No, I will not do it. I think that would be off topic. So that was problem elevator. It was hard, I mean, it wasn't easy, but I'm not the fan. I, I didn't like it after all. Maybe I didn't dislike it, but it's also not true that I liked it. Quest for dragons, second last problem. Here, I'm guessing that I will not implement, but we'll see. Why? Blah, 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 story, story, and then that last stupid sentence. Only if they solve the following problem. This already happened three problems ago. And yet, you should start reading from here. It's fine in long challenges when time doesn't matter, but here, why do you want to penalize people who read statements? Okay, let's scroll so that we would see only the real statement. It was in easy section. Oh, this is what you mean. I don't think they care much about practice sections. Oh, announcement. If you often watch my streams and you know something about Twitch and you want to be, you know, active in Twitch chat, then write to me on Discord about being becoming a Twitch moderator. I, I need a few Twitch moderators. Downgrade to this buffering issue. Switch to YouTube. The, the description contains YouTube link. You can go and downgrade there. But yes, it's an issue. 
what I can do is completely abandon YouTube, then become Twitch affiliate, and then I will get possibilities to downgrade the video, the quality always. <laughs> Actually, you can also invite 100 of your friends to watch, because if I have a lot of viewers, there will be possibility to downgrade the video quality. We have a sequence. Choose two consecutive odd elements and replace with the sum. Choose two consecutive even elements and replace with their sum plus one. Generally, two odd are changed to even, two even are changed to odd. Your goal is to create a sequence whose length is the smallest possible. Why do you want to say beautiful instead of smaller lexicographically? They say most beautiful one, and then in brackets they provide definition of smaller le lexicographically. Uh. Okay. So values don't matter for caring about the length. In terms of length, it's just about this. We have a sequence of zeros and ones. We can replace two consecutive ones with zero, two consecutive zeros with one. We cannot do anything if it is just zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. I don't know if I will look at long challenge. We'll see how it goes. We have this problem now, quest for Dragon Balls. The title has nothing to do with the problem, the story has nothing to do with the problem. Does it hurt to go from left to right? If we forget about lexicographically minimal, does it hurt to go from left to right and replace the first pair with the opposite type? Yes, it hurts. And this is the case. One, 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 zero. If I replace this with zero, I will get zero, one, zero, and that's the end. Instead, it's better to replace this with zero. Instead of getting this, I will get one, zero, zero. Then replace this, I will get one, one. Replace this, I will get zero. Let's think about lengths of blocks. Like this. In the top we have blocks of lengths 1, 4, 3, 4, 4. When something is greater or equal to, what I can do, well, there can be operations of replacing the middle, but I think I can skip them. I can not think about them. Uh, I can replace something with value smaller by 2 and then increase one of two neighbors by one. So it's like minus two for this guy, plus one to this one. By doing it twice, so also in the other way, I will in two moves, decrease both neighbors by one. To the dp. If n is big, then usually we don't think about dp. dp is very common if n is small. Does it mean that here it will not be dp? But for now I'm thinking about observations. Sometimes even I would too long think about observations and only, that jump, only then jump to what's really the algorithm. Mm. 
Mm, okay. For such a pair of consecutive values, also let's treat, let's assume that there are infinite zeros on both sides. It doesn't hurt to do so. For a pair of consecutive values, either I decrease both by one, or I just do one operation like that, maybe multiple times. I see some observations coming from that, but maybe I'm indeed going already too deep. Because when I look at someone, there is a prefix. That prefix might be changed already into some number of zeros and ones. But what about this? Maybe there is zero one zero one zero one zero. Now if there are two zeros, then this will all collapse. This into one, this into zero. Yeah, yeah. This will all collapse. So it's not that. It's not that I can look at single bit and say some dp value about the prefix. The prefix can be very long and it might still collapse. They could have at least put Goku and Krillin. Yeah, like if you want a problem about Dragon Balls, then maybe put Gra Dragon Ball characters there. Is solving the subtask beneficial? Oh, very possible. Yeah, I cannot perform a move if and only if uh, the sequence is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let's maybe solve the subtask. Mm. So, what if we start with this? We can pair, pair them up like that, for example. Maybe we just greedily always take the last two. It will be one, one, hmm. this way I collapsed suffix into a single value. I collapsed those four zeros into their sum plus something. Oh. This zero is equal to the sum of that plus Twice I collapsed zeros into ones, once I collapsed ones into zero. Uh, so in those cases I had plus one. So this zero, this bloody zero, is twice suffix. No, just suffix plus two. This will be one, this will be one, this will become zero. So this, at the end, I have sum of all elements plus the number of times I collapsed two zeros into one. For seven, it's quite nice because seven is a power of two minus one. And maybe it's just about the divisibility by four. Not even that. Four zeros collapse into one zero, so I can cut three zeros. 
might be very important. I cut three zeros. They have some number of things. So if the sequence is very long, then I bet that I can keep removing three elements, maybe from left, maybe from right, I don't know yet. As long as there are at least four of them. What happens with those with those three now? It will be just zero one or one zero. But because we want lexicographically minimal output, it will be remove that. This number then this zero becomes quite big. And this number stays, and those two are collapsed into one. It's okay to greedily always perform the last, the rightmost possible operation. That's my solution. For sequence of zeros. For sequence of ones, I think it's all the same. If numbers are positive in the input. Should we go with subtask then? And then it's a good subtask if I indeed can solve it first. Yes, yes, I did something similar. Okay. The, the code will take me three minutes, so it doesn't hurt to do it. Dragon.cpp. Balls sounds stupid. Dragon. This, um, I need long longs because after collapsing they will be big. If two last elements are equal, then collapse them. balls.cpp. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to avoid that. Exactly that. It makes sense. For sure, I named a program like that multiple times because there are combinatoric, combinatoric problems about balls. If two last elements have the same parity, then do that. Otherwise, I assume they must be 0 and 1. Mm, if it's at least 3. And now uh, let's copy paste. This works only for all even or all odd, and both cases satisfy that. Mm. 
first of all else break because nothing happened and then long long I need to print the size and in my opinion I deserve half the points not run, I wanted to submit. I'm learning Python and blah blah blah. I don't know what is good in what software engineering field. For competitive programming, but that's likely not your field, C++ is best, but Python is also fine. Could you do a short detour to monkey type? At the end, or let's say after the whole lunch time, I will do that and then I will move to Kukov. Okay, worked for the subtask. I'm betting right now that subtask shouldn't be should be worth much less than 50 points because here I think that it's not correct to go from the right also I wonder how others implemented this in um, it's it's a bit strange to find here high rated people who solved only a subtask but if this was a full code forces problem where this would be a correct solution after the contest I would go to the leaderboard I would read codes of people in the top in the top and I would see if they did it in any better way because this is ugly and maybe in some code I will see it in a nicer form then in the future I will also do it nicer in particular I could keep updating n size of a and then I can do some stuff like a of n minus 2 is equal f of n minus 1 n of n minus 2 and minus minus. I think that something like that and not really pop backing A but updating N will be much better. Which it will give me shorter code. I don't want to do it now. It's not worth it, but remember when absolving to read codes from other people. Mm. Did I not answer some question about that thing with artist? I don't have suggestions for some resources now. Use Google to find resources. Okay. Do I want to think about the full problem? Mm, not really. I will see the editorial. I'm not doing a problem solving session just to solve problems. I'm just mainly checking out quality of coach of problems. What I'm doing now isn't best for learning. What is a dot and minus two? Oh, yeah, it's second last element. I I know that it's very unusual, but a dot begin this gives you pointer to the beginning of vector and in particular this will give you value of that because think about this as an array where you say array of zero right a dot begin is pointer to the beginning so and it's the same as the array a dot end is just the same pointer but shifted by n so when you type this this would you this would give you element at position n so runtime error. But this will give you last element, second last element. I use this in convex hole where you need to access second last and third last element. If 
quick explanation. If x is the number of even elements, If there's the same remainder modulo of three of even and odd, because from a b we get a minus two b plus one, so the difference decreases by three or increases by three. Yes, the difference increases or decreases by three. They under they analyze it and understand when it can be reduced to a single element and when it can be reduced to two elements. What about three? Oh, if there is at least one pair of consecutive elements which have the same parity. Oh, that's interesting. Either if the array starts like that, we cannot do anything. But otherwise, we can, if it's at least this, After every move, we will have some options and we will never be stuck. I didn't suspect that, but it makes sense. If we can make at least one move, we will make so many moves that we will be left with two or one elements. That's a nice observation. I don't really want to go into the details since that's a tutorial is way too long. Uh, because, okay, maybe it's not way too long, I don't know the full proof. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Too often I just say that something is too long. No, it, it isn't. We have the quick explanation, and if you want a long proof, there is a very long one, sure. A dot end of minus two works for all data structures like sets and queues? No. No, no, no. It's it's for vector, only for vector. Because vector is at every moment it stores an array, you know. And this minus two in brackets, it is array like access. Okay. Uh, guys, you can see my GitHub page. In the description you will find it, but I have how to practice page and whenever there are some resources I recommend here as well, but not a lot of them. But you can see also links in the bottom. Everything I have to everything I'm recommending is either linked here somewhere in GitHub wiki, link in the description or just basically, you can watch my YouTube videos, code versus articles. This is also what I recommend. So we solved all but one problems. At this moment, I'm going to uh, see the standings. The standings should hide division two problems. Or wait, wait. What the hardest is Chef Part and Shenku. Chef Part and Shenku. Yeah, okay. Chef Part is much harder than other problems, apparently. Uh, Gennady won by a lot, 150 points of advantage. But I guess there is no other very strong competitor here. Maybe there are. Is this absolving the gray number? If yes, that's very nice. I I think that it's very good to encourage people to absolve. Uh, 
Do I use PBDS? Yes, I do. Far ordered set. Last problem. After this, I will do the monkey type. Somebody suggested, and then I will look at Kukov. Then if I still want to continue the stream, I will take suggestions from you, but now I would guess that I will not do it. I'm spending too much time on this. Maybe too much I'm trying to solve problems instead of just checking them out. Sequence is good if you can split into two sequences with the same bitwise R. This looks like a hard problem. <laughs> so the bitwise R is the same. The bitwise R as R prefix is increasing. For a suffix, it's increasing when we go from right to left. So it just to check if sequence is good, we can binary search. For every position, if we ask about prefix or suffix or, we can compare them. If prefix is smaller, then we need to go more to the right. I can solve a problem of checking if sequence is good. Here we have something completely different. And for that different thing, we just need to analyze a lot. Mm. I would go in the direction of uh, in this direction. For every bit, what matters is first and last position of this bit. In particular, I want to know where is the first and last odd number. And this creates some interval. This, this is first, the leftmost odd number, this is rightmost odd number. Same for the some other bit, second right bit of every number next bit and so on and now I care if there is non-empty intersections intersection of all those intervals this means that I want to just make two intervals disjoint that's enough some solution maybe later it will we will make it faster but I will iterate over bit one I will iterate over bit two. Each is from zero to each is from zero to thirty. And here I will take a look at position of numbers with this bit on, this bit on, and them both. And I will want to swap those adjacent numbers, so uh, reorder numbers with those op allowed operations, in such a way that, for example, I'm looking at this interval and this interval. I want to make them disjoint. It's impossible. Okay, here I can have this check. If any number has both bits on, mm, wait. Bits are not in IOI syllabus. I think they are, but you can check. I don't remember the whole syllabus. Also, it's not necessary that lunchtime contest follows syllabus very closely. Uh, 
it's hard to do it, you know. The, the syllabus forbids a lot of things. For example, we already saw one such problem today. The combinatorics problem required modular inverse. That's forbidden in IOI. I'm thinking if I understood, if uh, I'm doing a correct thing for intervals. I think it matter it I'm also fine so the sequence is not good if they have intersection of size 1 because the question is can there be split and uh, can there be such split that both sides are good yeah so i'm in this case i'm already fine and the sequence is not good i'm okay leaving this situation there can be then one number with both those bits on and it will become the the middle number of the two intervals okay so now i'm looking for a number with both bits on then there is group of numbers with this bit group of numbers with this bit and I need to move them around let's say bit 1 goes to the left bit 2 goes to the right and if they have those have some positions let's say yellow positions 2 5 and 9 and there are those positions of numbers with this bit on 3 4 8 and 10 and then for such two sequences, this can be done in linear time times logarithm for sure. I can binary search where the split should be. Let's say it is on position seven. Then I'm asking about the cost of move, shifting nine to the left to position seven or more to the left. 3, 4 should go to the right from 7. Of course, when they swap with each other, it just cost 1, moving both. Mm. So the red things will have positions then 7, 8, 9, 10. They need to have different positions. Yellow will be 2, 5, 6. Uh, it's, so it's the total the sum of those values minus the sum of those final values same here minus the times when i swap yellow with red it's a cool problem maybe i solve it a bit too fast and maybe i need to optimize for log because if i do binary search for this thing it's log cubic that's likely too much Time limit is big. I would need to get rid of one logarithm. But uh, if I do it in a complexity of yellow, yellow plus red, how many yellow numbers there are plus red numbers? Okay, no, never mind. I wanted to say that those elements are disjoint for every bit, but that's not true. So I would need to do it in linear time of yellow plus red and then to get the total complexity n log square. And yeah, some, maybe some two pointers or something. Then the problem is fine. With this I can even iterate over the middle position. Same thing. There will be two bit position i and j such that there are, exists at least one number with this. All elements of type 1 are on one side and all elements are on this other side. Such number exists then the array will be good if their count is equal to 1 and the element is situated between.
you have one element of type 3 then the condition of at least one sure okay what's the complexity <laughs> they wrote the complexity as 400 times n instead of n log square uh, I see why but it's a bit a bit stupid There are videos on Instagram about medium DP problems. What? I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe divide the sequence means you have to use the whole thing. Yeah, I think I understood the problem correctly. Okay. Last problem is fine. In general, the contest is all fine. Uh, it's not for it's for sure not significantly worse than code forces. Uh, the last one in particular is difficult. It took me a little time to come up with a solution and then it would be some implementation. Uh, for I don't know how much I would solve ShenQ if I tried. For elevator, I struggled too much and I wasted a lot of time today during a stream, that's bad. Yeah, generally I would participate if I knew that th this is the quality of problems. Okay. Uh, what's left for me today is Kukov. August Kukov, this thing. Oh, also, what I don't like is the number of problems here. If there are subtasks, you can have fewer problems than during a normal competition. Six is normal for binary competition, where you want to have give a different difficulty of problem like when you want to satisfy everybody beginners and non-beginners here if you have division one plus two then six binary problems per division is fine it's enough if you have subtasks then i would say four problems would be better because then maybe they would really be ioi style with some subtasks There is question in YouTube, what are you teaching? Uh, programming. I'm teaching programming. But before I move to Kukov, I said that I will check out monkey type. monkeytype.com type or type you so you made the type you said it with i i'm teaching rocket science you can say that click the words to focus i will paste you they will give you the link if you want to check it out as well refreshing uh, Six, but I made some mistakes. Row hundred sixteen consistency. What is consistency? Okay, I like this. I I used a similar thing, ten fast fingers a lot. And it also has simple English words. This is why I can type them fast.
Hmm, I think that's my record. I don't think I ever got more than 113 any any test really. Uh, but I got lucky with accuracy and those are simple English words. There is nothing easier for me than typing simple English words. Hundred accuracy you can get by typing the first letter and waiting to the end. Mm. I wonder what's my max here. Wait, I need to log in. Don't see anything here. Yeah. My English highest in ten fast fingers is hundred twenty-one. It's here at the bottom. Here, 133 is a big difference. 133.2. Nice. Should, I, maybe I should make a screenshot and post it somewhere later. Restart test, repeat test, toggle words history, save screenshot. I might want to create uh, an account there here later. It's quite pleasant. Discord. I'm just checking what's what's going on in this website. I can change the duration to duration to uh, sixty seconds or to some number of words. Punctuation. Also, if I copy this. Uh, wait. There, there was a button. Mm. And maybe it's worth pasting somewhere. Okay, here. Save. Because really, that's like greater by 10 than my record so far. Are all IGMs super fast at typing? No. No, no. It helps, but it isn't the most important thing. For example, RNG58 types quite slowly. Yeah. I, I opened the link from the chat without showing you, and it's recrawl. <sighs> If you have 50 average words per minute, you're fine. Cook off. Cook off, even though it's binary, has fewer problems. That's that's bad. Uh, relationship and red blue trees. Relationship, red blue trees. The beautiful sequence. Okay, those two are only for div2. Just a quick look. Uh, short, some short statement, does it matter? Uh, this one is slightly more complicated, but whatever. Division 1. Polygon relationship. I will give you in Twitch chat the link. This is August Kukov. If you feel it's painful to have low words per minute, then just practice. It won't hurt you to practice like in total maybe 20 hours and you will have nice words per minute. Watcher the bot. Regarding your question, read my how to practice GitHub page. You're given convex polygon. I 
I don't know what is a chord. This is the in a circle, I think this is segment connecting to points. Your goal is to draw as many sides of polygon in total as possible, including the polygon given at the start. So it's this. And maybe we don't use some side. Is this what a chart means? They don't like drawings, do they? This is a perfect problem where there should be a drawing. Chart is diagonal. Use vertices as endpoints. Okay. Uh, so, so just from six to. I mean, if there are six, then I can can connect every second. So. Every time I divide the number of vertices by two, so it's binary logarithm of a number divided by three. Is that the answer? And then this is like two out of ten problem because it's about understanding the statement. Hmm. What do I output? Number of sides of all polygons. Okay, I don't like it. Move on. Why do you want to do use HTML in Twitch chat? We have a red blue tree meaning oh, uh, they mean like to coloring bipartite coloring you may perform the following operation in number of times choose to adjacent vertices and swap their colors transform into a good tree mm. i will use white and red let's say for any tree there are only two ways to color the vertices. If the root is white, then children must be red, then their children must be white, and their children must be red. That's one, the other is opposite. Now we are given some coloring in, at the start, and we want to get to this coloring is in fewer number of moves. Then I can just say that those are targets, and if initially those vertices are colored, then the problem is in one move you can move a token, a red token, to it to adjacent vertex, and you need to get all tokens to targets. And that's possible by looking at every edge and seeing what's the difference for each subtree, for every edge. Split into two parts and say how many tokens need to move between those two parts. This is how many times you will use this edge. It's enough in a subtree, the subtree down, to know the difference between the number of targets and tokens. That's very easy. But it's a fine problem. That's not a quick explanation. Access requirement. I think it's the same. Yeah, I think it's the same. Move on. Uh, three problems left. 
beautiful sequences is next. Is CS Academy well known? It used to be well known, now it's quite dead. They don't host regular rounds. But it was very nice when it, it existed. I liked participating in CS Academy. If you're watching on YouTube, you need to go to Twitch chat if you want to use live chat. Consider a sequence with even length, left rotation is moving first to the end. Smallest value in one half is greater than the largest value in the other half. The sequence of numbers, let's say eight numbers, is good if we can do some shifting of this sequence such that some some four elements it should be all greater than the remaining elements. That's it. So then I will just shift those to the end, and that's exactly the definition. Now you're given a sequence. Find the number of sub of intervals such that they are good. So in them, there is some interval of values bigger than anything else. I will sort numbers from big to small. I would say that this problem makes some sense for lunchtime, because for smaller n you can do a lot more. Uh, sort values from small to big. Initially say that everything is zero. And in this order of small to big, right, big to small, maybe big to small, so sort decreasingly, and then slowly turn new values to one. This is this was the biggest value, second biggest, third biggest, fourth biggest, and when I've just turned this value on, I want to count good s intervals with this value. Such intervals of length exactly um, such that they contain this number and now the number of ones is equal to the number of zeros that's a common trick where we say that the number of non one the zeros are actually minus ones then the problem becomes count intervals containing this bit with sum of values exactly zero like this is for example good no, 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 uh, the problem was different. Wait. Ones should form a consecutive interval. So, find for this one, find the maximal interval of ones, and uh, then find how many zeros there are here and there. And either it will be something like that of size 4, because this interval of ones is of size 2. Uh, or maybe this is also possible if zeros form a consecutive interval. If I have this interval of ones, those zeros, those zeros, one, one, this is a new one. The candidates are, I will compute candidates using the size of this block, this block, this block, but either it's something like this, where there are four ones in the middle and then I need to choose some number of zeros from left and right, easy. Or it's something like that. And because there are four zeros in the middle, I need exactly some number of ones here and there. So they would sum up again. It's just some of one formula using the size of this block, this block and this block. A good keyboard? Yes, that's a good keyboard. Logitech Ultra X Premium. A video on making problems. But are you at least purple in code forces that you're if you're asking about problem setting? C 
equal to x. Okay, they do, I think, the same. Two sets of ranges. Okay, yes, it's the same solution. Hmm. Yeah, fine. Nothing too interesting. Two problems left. And the, the last one is difficult. Nobody solved it during a contest. As a reminder, today my main goal is to check out recent problems from CodeChef and decide if it's worth participating in CodeChef nowadays. If the problem quality is good enough. And it's good enough if it's at least close to code versus quality. 1700 rating. You know, just very, I will answer this very shortly. If you Google problem setting, code forces, then you will get around 10 blocks about it. You can also Google this. And sometimes those are official instructions, sometimes a block by somebody. Uh, the second thing there is, is how to use Polygon. Read about this as well. What is code versus polygon? If you know those two, if you read about that and you can use code versus polygon and you are high rated, you will be able to create a contest. How much rating the problems should get? What are you talking about? It's not that problem setter chooses their rating. The difficulty. You just think if you have good ideas for problems from easy to hard, then you propose it. Second last problem, Chafina and dishes. Is there a drawing? No, there is never a drawing. There is also, there isn't a sample test, a sample explanation. If you have doubts about problems, so that you wouldn't see, so you wouldn't clear your doubts. Uh, I, I think I need to write code forces block about it. So that all platforms would realize that sample explanation is already there to help people. And it doesn't hurt. Somebody can skip it, but they use it only if they have doubts. They're end chefs. And there are types of dishes. There are dishes. Each chef can cook dishes of exactly one type. Also, each chef is a friend of K different chefs. Is this symmetrical? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't know if being a friend here is symmetrical. If A is friend of B, then if, if B is friend of A. Maybe sample shows that maybe not. Whenever some chef cooks a dish, he asks all chefs who are either his friends or know how to cook the same dish. Okay. 
Hmm. We want to choose such an interval of chefs that the multiset of their friends plus people who use the same dish this should hit all the chefs. This means that for every chef we have a requirement that either one of his friends maybe not either because it's one of his for every chef one of his friends must be in the interval or somebody who likes the same dish must be in the interval. What do I think about problem quality until now? It's just slightly worse than a good cut versus round. Mm. I don't like the lunchtime format. I don't recommend lunchtime uh, contests if you are preparing for IOI. They don't have subtasks. No, they don't have good subtasks. Lunchtime is very far away from IOI style. Uh, but other than this single thing, the problems were fine. There are some simple things for them to fix. Simple things like to give sample explanation, to make a drawing when possible. They spend so much time on editorials, on YouTube videos, and they cannot make a single drawing for such a problem. Or for polygon problem. Come on. This long has drawings. I'm now judging this contest. And I'm not, and I'm obviously only thinking about cook of, cook of lunchtime and long. I'm not trying other contests, and Coachev should hide other contests. People think that Coachev is bad because some people don't realize that only three problems a month are rated, and other problem, other contests are just random. In Code Forces, there is a clear distinction. There is gym, and there is main thing, and you can expect. Contest in code forces in contest tab to be of high quality. I hate the chef team. I also think that chef team is is bad. But the, I I understand that they will not want to modify to change that. They need statement verifiers. Isn't Xelos a statement verifier? Elevator was ambiguous too. Oh yes, that was bad. It was worse in the past, anyway. Try July, uh, July cook-off. Mm, I don't have time today. It's almost three hours. I have two problems left. They are hard. I will try them at least. So that will be enough for today. Expect me to finish in half an hour. The stream will finish in around half an hour. The reminder for YouTube, I only read Twitch chat. YouTube stream is there only for two reasons. One is if Twitch doesn't work for you, you can watch on YouTube. Second is after the stream, YouTube still has the recording, so you can watch them there. Statement verifier shouldn't just check English. Statement verifier should be somebody who is good at competitive programming and they will try to make the statement good for competitive programmers. Okay, uh, what's going on here? And while I think a plugin, because I think that if you are watching now for at least half an hour, then it means you should join this Discord server. If you're on Twitch, there you can scroll down here. Same in YouTube. There is Discord server created two days ago. I'm pasting the link in Twitch chat. Please join if you find stream like this one interesting. At least for some time, maybe I will not advertise this Discord on the main YouTube channel, because that's a bit more mainstream. Like more, maybe just, I don't know. I think that if I ever make some mainstream video on YouTube, I will not advertise the Discord server. Like to, to avoid a lot of people who just ask 
how to I'm a beginner programmer can I use Python in courses yes you can you can use Google if you have such a question uh, for some reason people upload the answers for the long challenge while it's going on yeah if you have 10,000 people participating in something some of them are stupid some of them don't understand rules some of them don't care What was the problem about? For every chef, one one of his friends must be in the interval, or one of his dishes. Hmm. Or his dish must be taken. Okay, is free. That's an important condition. The number of friends is very, very, very small. But your dish can be used by a lot, a lot of chefs. Only a few friends. Then what about this? If I'm a friend, I'm I'm one chef, and I have two friends, let's say, then th it creates some intervals where if LR is within this interval, let's say that I'm chef number one, if LR is inside this, then it doesn't contain any of my friends. Now, within this interval, if I know this dish, now blue, there can be a lot of blue edges, a lot of them. This creates a lot of smaller intervals. And each of those yellow intervals is bad, and also every smaller intervals is bad. Okay, I can solve the problem. Uh, I will just say, when I look here, I say, hey, you, this, your blue dish, plus one. I will mark in some way plus one in the blue dish. At the end, after I'm considered all the chefs, for every such blue dish, when it has plus three, it means that okay, now we forget about this thing. Mm, there is blue dish connected to some chefs. And let's say that it has number three, it means that each of those intervals not containing chefs who know this dish, I add plus three in some data structure for those. Actually, maybe I will have a two dimensional data structure. And this will be like three times every interval within the yellow one, like this thing, you are bad because I added free for you. If you have positive value at the end, you're bad. Okay, but there are friends. And for every such friend, I'm saying, oh, this interval is okay. Here, what I drew here in yellow, in this first previous drawing, it looks like this. And I need to be able to say, but hey, if you contain this guy, you're fine. So on this yellow, I need to say minus one, but on those two smaller, plus one, plus one. So that's two dimensional data structure, but I don't need to answer things online. Two, two dimensional because 
interval can be represented as a two, as a point in two dimensions and by saying add plus one to all intervals inside some interval it means add plus one to all l comma r such that l is at least let's say 10 and r is at most 15 and this is just some rectangle in 2d add plus one here and i can gather all those events and then do a sweep line from left to right and have uh, maintain a single segment tree. I wouldn't enjoy implementing this solution, but it's fine. Uh, reading the chat. Some discussion about about cheating in code. Just for everybody's information, I switched to only Twitch chat also because for some reason it tends that yeah, Twitch chat often has interesting discussions. Maybe that's related to just, uh, I, just I don't know, maybe the fact that I know some nicknames there. In the, inter in the internet it's more convenient to use a nickname rather than a first and second name on YouTube. Pointers and segment tree with lazy propagation. I didn't need lazy propagation in my solution. My solution is different. Okay, this is the key idea in their solution, and mine is completely different. They sort chefs, so chefs of with dish of type one are put first, then type two. You have a few friends. I see. So they are able to, for every chef, to only have constant number of intervals of their relative chefs. Their solution is better. It's nicer. I don't see an issue with my with my solution, but I'm not going to implement it. It would be boring. I, and I also thought about pointers and about something like mon it monotonic. It's monotonic that for every L, like how far with R we can go. Maybe also some divide and conquer is possible. Are the rules limiting being able to stream to Twitch and YouTube at the same time? As somebody said, only if you are an affiliate. I am not. There are a lot of people who prefer watching on YouTube. And this is why I double stream. If I don't do it, then anyway I need to record and then upload to YouTube after 24 hours, in case I'm Twitch affiliate. And that's a bit inconvenient for me. So it isn't a big difference for me whether I'm double streaming or recording Twitch and then uploading after 24 hours. I will in the near future though test how it goes with Twitch only stream and upload after 24 hours. But a lot of people co complain about this. Like they prefer buffering on YouTube. On the other hand, if I only do Twitch, I will get possible of possibility of downgrading always from 1080p to 720. So no, there are trade-offs. Affiliate also has a contract. This way, for, if you have some website saying that affiliate isn't doesn't have a contract, please give me uh, show me. I'm quite sure that affiliate already signs a contract, and I saw that contract. It says about exclusivity. Yeah, 
I know that there are some people watching right now on YouTube and using Twitch chat. Some people prefer to use YouTube because of performance. Last problem, last problem for today. This means that ranges don't overlap, no, that one range doesn't overlap with center of another range. And f because of that, it will be easier. No sample explanation, no drawing. Add a donation button to your stream. Uh, no, I don't need it. But thank you. You can donate to some charity of your choice. Actually, maybe I will add a button to donate to charity. Good idea. Yeah, just we'll see. And this only makes sense if I do a lot of streams. And we'll see how it goes. I I'm doing a lot of them this week. Actually, I'm going to stream during the weekend as well. Mm, likely same time, 5 p.m. Polish time. Okay, if this has range equal to two, let's say this has strength three, and it will do plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus one, plus zero, plus zero. And this, I believe, means that I will, there cannot be a police center in any of those affected vertices. But there can be one here with strength 4, maybe different color. And it will add plus 3 here, plus 2, plus 1. They only guaranteed that one range, like yellow range, doesn't contain red center. Red range doesn't contain yellow center. If I'm misunderstanding that, please somebody tell me about it. I'm surprised that this is easier because of that. But even without that condition, isn't it an easy problem with centroid decomposition? Nobody solved it? Did somebody try? Uh, I'm looking at standings to see if there are any strong people in the leaderboard. Yes, a lot of them. Whoa. Maybe I don't know what is 7 star in Kouchev, but Ui is very strong. Is this Kevin, like, what's his name, Kevin58? I don't know the numbers there. Why it's not centroid decomposition? Competitive, competitive programming is, pos is a possible hobby for you, but 
you don't need it for regular software engineering. What advice would I give to students that would best utilize their acquired skills? I don't know. Uh, I can give advice about how to practice competitive programming. I don't know what answer you expect. When did I learn segment trees? Within like, maybe one year after I learned programming. Maybe two years. We are not given as no, no, no we are. Why is this not central decomposition? Yeah, uh, exactly. Central decomposition doesn't use the constraint, this crazy constraint, this one. And it seems very easy. During the contest, I would already start implementing uh, because during a contest, it's not that you see the final standings, you see the current standings. Let's think. This is the centroid. When we have something here, we can iterate over all the vertices. And whenever we have some center with a strength, let's say this one has strength 5, we see how far away it is from the root. 4, 3, 2. H here we say we have strength 2 here and you propagate to all children except for this one. Uh, that, that's usually easy to subtract. And then in for every subtree we will just get some information like okay, so if this is 2 then here I will add plus 1. This plus one. Maybe if this was instead five, I would add here plus four, plus four. And after considering all such centers, then I would look at every subtree and propagate those values down. Just linearly. All of that will be n log n in total. If my recrawl was successful, it would be a great clip to show my friends. Is it? <laughs> I don't know, it's a bit too old. Not, not really interesting. Try to come up with something, some way to troll a person, instead of using somebody, something a million people already tried. Draw, what drawing pad device? CFAQ. There is something like hardware there. Why is this not centroid decomposition? Why the condition? Oh wait, the range. This is max maximized with zero. Uh, but that should be still easy. Okay. Mm. Okay, I, I forgot about this for a moment, maximizing with zero. So after adding plus one I would add plus zero and then plus minus one, but it's not a big deal. There are many ways to handle that. 
uh, like hmm, uh, like what so, how, how is it called sentinel some watcher where at particular height you give information stop where you know that when you keep going down at some moment you want to say that even though you add some linear function somewhere because it will be plus four here then plus two here something like that you will update the difference here that, that's still easy you have to do prefix sums or of this piecewise linear functions yes that that's but sentinel will work as well uh, but by that i mean here i know a and b and i know just here some update for a b but well, that's equivalent to doing prefix sums of piecewise linear functions Okay, so uh, Andrew, do we agree that we have n log n without? Do you agree that we have n log n without using this fact? And I see how the problem becomes linear if something easier holds true, if the ranges are completely disjoint, because then for every center we just linearly spread here it isn't the case because there can be this uh, something like a star with big branches and by big i mean just let's say length three uh, yeah this uh, where there are centers in every leaf of range five just you know, not hitting any other center but then each of them visits linear number of vertices Let's see the editorial. From the above observation, you will observe that condition that sum of ranges is small? No, I don't... Okay, sum of ranges, not the sum of vertex, vertices visited. Uh, I think if we know half every range if every range is divided by two then everything becomes disjoint and then yes i agree with the observation this is just instead of all of visited vertices they do it in all of depth i mean range and they do stuff for they do queries about all vertices at some distance from the starting one it's like segmentary on bfs order yeah, I think so. There are for sure multiple techniques to to handle queries about things at particular distance. I I don't even care what exactly they used here. I will look again. Just the quick explanation part, not the long explanation. Security level of the nodes with val plus d.
max of zero. Only with some particular depth range, we want to add this to compute their sum. All the updates which are done on ancestors of this node X, including itself. Okay, so it's more that right now I'm adding in my value and later for every node I will ask about my ancestors. So it's not that for a center I update all other values. No, for a value I take values from ancestors, from centers up. Uh, Euler tree flattening. I don't know if that's, that's the name, but what I would, if we just write down vertices in what Andrew said, BFS order, so this layer, then this one, then this one, then this one. Then for you, your descendants at the particular depth create an interval. When you look up, and here what they will say is they will iterate over ancestor. I will make a drawing. At least this is how I understand it. Uh, this is the center. And let's say we care about range 5 from the center. I go up by one, by two, and let's say fr from this, I go to the sides and I want to say, I care about depth three, up to three on the sides. Then in this subtree, I will care about some layer of vertices minus this layer in this subtree, so minus this. I will have the sum of two intervals. I don't think it's called Euler tour here. It's just yeah, BFS order. Seg three on BFS order. So I would iterate from the, the center up, up, and for each guy I would say that. I don't want to get depth square. Yeah, I, I would just add some sentinels there to say that here we add a function, basically, a simple linear function to in order to here increase by four, then down by three, by two, and just put some sentinel here to subtract. Uh, I can add sentinel to interval. B BFS order is just you know, the, the simple thing. One, two, three, four. In a binary tree, normally we have such an or such ordering. We are talking about this ordering. Okay, uh, they they just got some solution using their condition, and it's cool. Uh, but it's it's quite obvious here that a tester and a setter they are not very high rated because centroid decomposition is standard here. Here's another solution. Given point v r, this is equivalent to like some. I will copy your, I can actually show the chat here for a moment. Uh, yeah, this is equivalent to like sum of half integer i zero to r subtree of this plus equal one. Mm -hmm. We say that 
for a root, instead of saying that we add less and less the further we are, we just add one plus one to this subtree, plus one to this one, plus one to this, and plus one to that. <laughs> By the way, I would do that with centroid decomposition. Uh, I mean, to, to finalize that in any way. Okay. In order to handle adding this not for uh, not for the root. Yeah, I, I think we're done with the problem. I just don't understand why people didn't solve it during the contest. Maybe the previous problems required too much time and implementation. It's subtree rooted ancestor. Right. Mm. Uh, uh. Organizers weren't experienced enough to realize a well-known standard solution and just I think the contest was too short and maybe previous problems took people too much time this is why we have zero here or something like tests were wrong oh there are announcements hmm. I don't know. maybe i will again post on the forum Standard problem. Problem even without the condition. Yeah, I, I don't want to write the whole explanation. If somebody knows centroid decomposition well, it isn't difficult. Now, with that done, I will finish the stream. My final, I don't know, rating of coach of recently is. It could be better. <laughs> That's my. It could be better out of ten. One problem didn't. Re uh, the elevator problem didn't say what's up with differences by one, and you need to scroll down to comments for that. I didn't more than once thought that oh, the solution is beautiful. Here in this hardest cook of problem. This, there is an is there is a standard solution without the special condition from the statement and lunchtime contest is very bad for IOI preparation because it doesn't focus on subtasks and it has too many problems still for just you know treating this as a binary contest both lunchtime and cook-off are fine to participate it's not that you will waste your time I would choose a code forces round over this one, but still fine to participate. And now that 300 IQ will be a coordinator, yeah, I will participate. That's my verdict. I don't have time today to check previous problems from long or to get your suggestions from the chat. Sorry about that. Uh, hey, I'm thinking about solving more Polish Olympiad. Do you know why Skopel is so incomplete? Hmm. Maybe I know the answer, maybe not. Uh, in five minutes, I'm finishing the stream. That's announcement for everybody. Now just this. Uh, by Maybe it's this. You are browsing 
English statements on prob on Scopul problem set, and you will find only those problems that we translated to English for some reason. So those will be problems we gave, for example, to Russian camps. I don't know. So we needed to translate. Well, some problems were never translated to English and then maybe they aren't in English scopul or just they aren't in scopul whatsoever. Can you give me a link where you're checking or and when they where they are missing? Polish and English are both incomplete and there are some that are English only, some that are Polish only. Okay, it's strange. Problem set. I don't have that in history. Mm. Okay. Okay. If you ask, what about this? You need to write to Kostka on code forces. Write to Kostka, and he will know. Kostka will no, just for the sake of write, writing down the nickname. Uh, my guess was exactly about which problems go to some old, some foreign camps. Mm, yep, with that done, uh, I can finish the stream for today. On Saturday or Sunday, but I don't know yet. I will know in a few hours maybe. I will again stream, maybe for a short time, like one hour. Maybe that will be Twitch only, we'll see. Uh, for example, if you want to get notified, join the Discord server, link in the description. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. And also go to the Discord server or YouTube comments for suggesting new video streams, whatever. Bye bye, everybody.